Hi, Julian De Rosier from the IIF, International Investment Forum, here in Mining in Debat 2022, Cape Town, South Africa. I'm joined with Andrew Dining. Hi, Andrew. Hi, Julian. How are you? Very good. Thank you. Excellent. Uh, Andrew is uh, CEO of Samara uh, Resources. Um, Andrew, I saw you walked in with a trophy. I mean, we have to talk about that. What happened with your company today? Yeah, they just had the mining investment battlefield for junior companies in Africa, and Sarama just won the award. So we had a, a heat yesterday, and we got got into the final group there, and we just had that had the uh, competition today against some very good opposition, and we were fortunate enough to take away the win. So I'm very happy with that. That the judges recognised that you know the value that we're offering shareholders, and and the uh, I guess the you know, really good things we've got ahead of us. And that's really great. And maybe a little, uh, a little comment on that. How great it is to have those side events, little out of the box thinking here on which you have a chance to really battle out for investment and show potential investors the value of your company. Yeah, I think it's great. It's, 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 a, it's a great, I guess it's a great approach to, to things. It's just a short, you know, rapid fire presentation about the company, you know, to a group of experts who then uh, I, I guess they look at you know what you've discussed and they have a bunch of questions. Um, so I think it's a it's a great you know it's a great format and it's a great opportunity to showcase the company and just bring out the you know the value and and, and the main I guess the things of interest to, to investors. Absolutely. So why don't you tell us a little more about that value action? What actually the judge I've seen in your company and also a rapid fire I guess yeah. <laughs> interview here with a few minutes only. Yeah, um, I, I think that the things the judges picked up on, you know, I was, I, was, I was really pleased with, right? So, you know, Sarama we've got a, we operate in Burkina Faso, so it's a, a very well established gold jurisdiction in West Africa. Yep. We, we have a great land position there, we control a big part of the Hyundai belt which is, you know, one of the best gold belts in Burkina Faso and one of the best in West Africa. Um, so we have a very dominant position in the southern part of that belt. So you know it's a great place to work in, in the country. Um, but also I think importantly we've seen a lot of consolidation, and our, our main neighbour is Endeavour Mining. So um, we have a joint venture with them on one project that yep. we've got there. We have our main asset that joins that, and they have another one in between. So um, when you look at that from a strategic point of view between us and Endeavour, there's another mine there. So we've got line of sight to mine development now. Um, but if you add in Endeavour's ground, then it's only better. So Endeavour are looking at that ground now. So we think at some point down the track, there's a conversation to be had. Yep. And either that comes into us or we go into Endeavour. So yep. we, we, we would prefer it coming to us. <laughs> Absolutely. I want to build a mine. I'm a mining guy. I've been, been in the industry my whole life. Um, I, I, was, I was actually running Moto Gold Mines, which I, I think people in Germany would probably be familiar with. Um, with I took over from Klaus Eckhoff. Absolutely. Um, that's now in production doing 800,000 ounces a year. So we were very happy with that discovery, but I was quite sad when we were taken over because I was looking forward to building a mine. So hopefully we get there on this one, but we've got a big asset again. So Exactly. And, and, and that sparks a conversation, basically. You are you're in a very stable, known country. Uh, the conversation is more about the belt, the strategic, strategic positioning of your land, uh, the, the producers that are around you, and, and not only what could make you an obvious takeover, uh, as you saw, or someone coming, but basically also you wanting to build a mine. This is not something we hear from all juniors companies. A lot of them like to acquire a big length position, wrap it up, send it to the majors. Yeah. And this is very different to hear that you actually want to build it. Yeah, I mean, I think if you look at our, our board and management team, the DNA is there. We all have mining operations backgrounds. So we're probably a little different to some of the previous people you described. Um, we also think the best value creation for our shareholders is moving the project as, as far up the development curve as possible um, and putting it into production. Now, if someone wants to acquire the company, if they know that you can finance it and build it, well, then they have to pay full tote, right? If they, if they think that you're just sitting there waiting for someone to take you over, you're never going to get full value. Um, and if you put it into production, you get a re-rate in the market and, 
it's onwards and upwards and good examples of that, you know, Perseus Mining Absolutely. have done it. West African Resources yep. have acquired B2's properties in Bikina. They'll be a 400,000 ounce producer soon. Um, you know, and even Allzone Gold, who are building now, I think I was talking to their CEO this morning and he said they'll be doing 200,000 ounces probably in four or five years. So. And, and, and so for, for viewers that are less acquainted with, with summer resources, um, in which state of development exactly you are? So you discuss about the build, about yeah. your position, but maybe a little more about the different projects you have going on. Yeah, we, we have three projects. So one's a joint venture with uh, Endeavour, which I mentioned, that has 700,000 ounce resource on it. So that's, you know, it's advanced. Um, the Sanatura project, which is our main project, so that's got just under three million ounces. So that project underpins the value of the company. But I think importantly within that resource, about a third of that's oxide. So that's what we target to develop the mine. So it's a simple, modest capex development. So it's not too complicated straight out of the gates. We'll focus on very rapid payback periods as well. So we look to get a payback sub two years. And then we have a third early stage exploration play, which we like a lot. Um, we really like the ground position, we've done a little bit of work um, and now it's, it's um, you yeah, we just view that I guess as exploration optionality, we'll put some, some, some holes into that, this upcoming program, but um, yeah, so three projects, one, you know, we'd call it late stage exploration, but the aim of the work now is to see how big we can make it, so it's currently just short of three million ounces, so we would like to get it closer to four than to three before we put a pin in it and say this is what we're going to develop. That sounds great. And what are your what are your next development uh, roadmap within the next six months, if you can tell investors? Yeah, we, we've after a bit of a hiatus um, in the last couple of years for a bunch of reasons. Um, you know, obviously, COVID and whatever. We've had limited work in the country. We've just mobilised to the field, so we've got two drill rigs working in the field now. We've got a third going next week, so we've got a lot of drilling. We've got a fifty thousand metre drill program that we that we're probably ten percent of the way through. Okay, um, and that's just focus on, I guess we're calling them uh, low hanging ounces, so yep. the obvious targets, quick hits yep. um, and shallow, so highly accretive to any development picture. Absolutely. And lastly, maybe a bit on your share structure and where you're traded, obviously. Yeah, that's that's also a good question. Um, we're, we're a dual listed company, so we're listed on the TSX, um, TSXV under SWA. Yep. Um, we've just listed on the ASX under SRR and we have a Frankfurt listing as well. Um, the ASX listing only went live at the start of last week, so we raised $8 million in that listing. It was very well supported, so we had existing shareholders come in, particularly Europeans and Americans, um, but also a range of investors from retail through to high nets and institutional. So we're very pleased with our register. Um, we have a fairly clean capital structure, particularly for someone that's been listed on the TSX for some time. So we've about 140 million shares out and very few warrants. Um, and you know, eight to nine million dollars in the bank that we're kind of eating through fairly quickly with, with the drilling. So um, yes, we, we, you know, we're fairly well positioned after that Australian listing and investors have a choice of where they can buy stock. Exactly. <laughs> but um, I think for us, the ASX, you know, West Africa is a very well trodden um, road for Australian exploration juniors, yep. you know, Australian punters have made a lot of money in Africa. Uh, Euros Hartleys, which is a leading resource broker in Australia, were the broker that listed us, um, and they did a great job. The book was well oversubscribed and was closed very quickly. Well, that's great to hear. So I am hearing your good position. Work is being done. Continuous work is going to be get, getting yep. done in the next few months also. Three projects, a lot to focus on. I invite investors to go to your website, Online Presence. Sorry? Do, do you have an online present? What's your website? Yeah, your website is saramaresources.com. Perfect. Um, and we also have a LinkedIn profile and Twitter profile. Perfect. So feel free to go on there. If you go to our website, you can sign up to our mailing list as well. Perfect. So this is where investors can get more information out online. I invite you to go and see it. Andrew, thank you very much for your time. Thank you, Julian. I appreciate it. And best of luck for your project. Thank you. Thank you.